South Carolina and Kentucky. I took South Carolina spread. I also took South Carolina to win over five and a half games this season. Are people starting to believe? Remember we were talking about, and I had this, I went on Drew Tamu's Colin show, and the question of the day was, how many defenses are is uh, Texas A&M going to see that are better than Notre Dame's all year, right? And I was looking at the schedule, and I'm like, I mean, the only two that I see that could be close, right, are probably Texas and South Carolina. And I think people thought I was crazy for thinking that the South Carolina defense is really stinking good. Do you believe me now? No, we haven't seen. This Kentucky offense also might be really bad. Okay, we don't know for certain. But boy, do I feel really good about South Carolina's defense. I don't feel better about necessarily with the Lenore Sellers. Now, I do feel better in the sense where I think yeah. Kentucky's defense is good, too. I thought Lenore I thought Sellers, Sellers was fun. Good. Yeah. I thought that one pick where he overthrew that guy, maybe it wasn't even the best like idea of a throw either. But boy, are things, I think, maybe looking in the right direction for that South Carolina program. For Kentucky, um, I'm not selling my stock in Kentucky. I took their over six and a half win total. I'm I'm gonna stick with that, but there needs to be better quarterback play by Brock Vandegrift because you're not gonna win football games with Gavin Mims at that quarterback. You're not gonna do it. And I know Rutgers can do it against Big Ten West teams. All right, just running the football, but I don't think Kentucky has the same rushing attack that they did last year either. So they need a quarterback to find ways to get touches to Barry Brown and the other talent that they have on that offense. I thought their defense was fine. I thought Kentucky played decent. And it, South Carolina scored 30 points because of that pick six, right, and some field position issues that the Kentucky defense was dealing with. So, yeah, like when you look at Kentucky as a team and you're looking at their schedule, obviously it's an SEC schedule, which, you know, I'll say maybe I haven't been impressed with the bottom tier of the SEC so far. But you play against Georgia. You play against Ole Miss. You play against Florida on the road. Tennessee, Texas, those are five pretty good teams, right? If you're going to win over six and a half games, you can't lose all five of those games, right? Not to mention Louisville at home. So a Vanderbilt team that's looking a little bit frisky, a little bit frisky. So I, I am, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about, you know, my bet of over six and a half wins for Kentucky, but I'm not selling my Kentucky stock, though, if that makes sense. No, no, I'm with you there. And and I think it'll take time for Vandegrift and those guys to get settled in. I mean, he's a guy, with, yes, he's older, but he doesn't have a ton of experience. I was disappointed in the lack of manufactured touches that you can get a guy like Barry Brown, Jamori Macklin, a one-on-one -on -one ball to Dane Key. I, I know that that defensive line <laughs> made things borderline impossible, but I I do think there are ways to, to, to kind of move around that. But the reality is, is like South Carolina had like 240 yards and they scored 31 points. You mentioned the short fields they had. If you look at their scoring drives, right, that touchdown, they had it at the 40-yard, at 61-yard touchdown drive, right? So they had almost plus field position there. They had a 20 yard field goal drive. You know, they had a 58 yard touchdown drive, a 43 yard touchdown drive. And then obviously the pick six. Yes, Sellers looked better. And I thought he looked, I, I was really impressed. And obviously, Ashford is not the answer, though. Sellers is the guy long term. He was efficient. He was on time with the balls. It was good. It was good. But Raheem Sanders looked good. It, it was more about that defense. And that's how they're going to be winning games. That's how they're going to be doing it. The problem with that is, the margin for error is tough, and that schedule is brutal. Ole Miss, Alabama, Missouri, Clemson gets their act together, and then you've got teams like A&M and Oklahoma and LSU next week. LSU game day, by the way, early 11 a.m. kickoff there for you, you know, in, in South Carolina, in Columbia there, which will be awesome. But that's my only concern going forward is, I would have liked a little bit more explosiveness. Now, part of that, too, is Kentucky's defensive line and Kentucky being good defensively. So I guess we'll see what happens against LSU. If I had to be nitpicky, because they did win by 25 on the road as basically, what, almost 10-point dogs. So that, that one's pretty awesome, obviously, for South Carolina. And, and 
not to hang their hat on anything, but those, that D-line was crazy. It was crazy. Vandegrift had zero chance. They were playing out of their freaking mind, and you were on it early. You were on it all offseason. This South Carolina defensive line is different, and that's what their internal optimism was you know, for this staff to be able to compete and win every football game they play in because of that defensive line and would we'll slowly bring along sellers in that running game and hopefully that downfield passing game will come and then you'll be able to win some games against some really good football teams. Because they have talent at receiver. It just hasn't been fully utilized yet. Like, where's Nick Harbour? Where's Gabe Lar- Gage Larvardane? Right, Jared Brown finally poked his head out this past game, but yeah, I'm, I like. I think. Yeah, I think there's some talent here, I like Josh Simon uh, as well, tight end there. So I'm, I'm very optimistic about this team. I'm not. I still have my questions about the offensive side of the football, but, again, credit to the South Carolina. And look, if they beat Vanderbilt, to reach a bowl game, all you have to do is. Beat Akron, Wofford, and then one other SEC team, whether that's Texas A&M at home, whether that's LSU. Uh, there are some spots to be had that I think that they could make a bowl game. And here's what I'll say, too, is we saw Alabama's offensive line struggle, right? We saw Oklahoma's offense struggle. We saw Clemson have their hands full with Georgia. And by the way, you know, you talked about South Carolina's defensive line, defense being, you know, up there with, you know, your Texas's and potentially Notre Dame's, but is it crazy that I almost feel better about South Carolina's defensive line than I do Georgia's? I don't know if that's blasphemy and or Notre not. Notre Dame's but, defensive line, by the way? Yeah, yeah. So I, that, to me, that that's a game that they could absolutely give Clemson struggles. It's going to be about how consistent, how explosive can you be with sellers in this offense? And that's going to be the, the ceiling because if you are Ole Miss, if you're Alabama, LSU, Missouri, Clemson, Oklahoma to teams with legit college football aspirations. You do not want to see South Carolina on your schedule. They are going to give you fits defensively with what they can do, rushing the passer and hopefully and controlling the game in that aspect. And yeah, man, it, it's, it's fun. It, it's a lot of fun to watch those guys really wreak havoc. And damn, this is exactly why, exactly why we need to make over Overreactions in week one because this South Carolina team looked terrible offensively last week against Old Dominion. And obviously the defensive line looked really good that game too, but we saw it really come to fruition against Kentucky and just dominate 